misinformation. It's a uh, very hot topic right now, uh, especially in COVID times over the last two years. A lot of discussion and a lot of accusations of misinformation. Um, even with the war in the Ukraine right now, Russia is very well known for their use of misinformation to try to generate sympathy um, for their military actions that otherwise they wouldn't have. Uh, Vladimir Putin and, you know, used this strategy unsuccessfully, I would say, this time. Uh, but he's tried it in the past, maybe at various times, successfully and unsuccessfully. Um, but it's a very important topic because, as I said, it's often weaponized right now. Uh, it's often used to silence those who maybe don't fit in a certain narrative or certain mainstream views that are popular right now. So it's important to talk about it and to try to be discerning as we try to figure out, you know, if something is actually misinformation, if that's just being used to um, close down open debate and that type of thing. I think, you know, prior to the last maybe 10, maybe even five years, um, you know, it was fairly obvious maybe what misinformation was, or at least what the definition of it was, maybe not always when it was being used. Um, because when it's being used well, it, you know, it's hard to discern from the truth, and that's kind of the point, I guess. Um, but, you know, before the last five or ten years, misinformation would have been typically a deliberate attempt um, on a party to get out information that is untrue, and typically in order to reach some certain end. So maybe you are deliberately misleading the public about the product that you've made and saying it works better than it does or it doesn't have certain side effects that it actually does. That would be a type of misinformation, which in, you know, is just lying or telling an untruth and you're aware that it's an untruth. Um, there could also be the misinformation that maybe is not deliberate, right? So somebody truly believes something, so maybe a conspiracy theory that they've read they've heard about or they just make sense to them and then they go and tell other people about it and continue to spread that information that uh, can be you know shown to be false demonstrably right now, obviously even with that old definition it's not you know always obvious what's true and what's not right so even then there was some flexibility but the, I feel like the label back then was you know, used in circumstances when it was pretty obvious that something was untrue, either deliberately or not, and it could be proven to be false. Um, however, more recently, we've seen that label be applied um, to typical things that don't fit into a narrative, right? So that's a little bit different, right? So if there's a, a narrative that's popular that says this, maybe this is the cause of things, or this is how things are, um, this is the explanation for things, Right, and that's typically an all-encompassing viewpoint that explains, that attempts to explain a current situation, usually with some sort of simplicity. Um, so that's kind of you know what a narrative would be is just a simple explanation for why things are the way they are. Um, if you look at COVID, right, the the narrative, um, especially by the mainstream media and by the political elites, uh, became cohesive maybe, you know, when, after the first year or so, when they had aligned on what they thought was correct and incorrect um, explanations of where the virus came from. So you can say, for instance, you know, the lab leak theory originally was decried as misinformation, not even misinformation, uh, but beyond information beyond misinformation is also, you know, a racist theory, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you know, obviously that has turned out to be not misinformation and it's, you know, unproven obviously either way, but now people have admitted that, okay, perhaps that is a possibility. Um, and you can see, you, you could see, you know, all the people gathering around or at least all the people that you know, have the ability to speak out and have a large platform gathering around the accusation of that as misinformation, right? And kind of doubling down on that. Um, 
I think you begin to see the problem with that label, even with that one example, right? Um, as soon as something is labeled that way and there's pressure to for other people to label it that way, then any true debate or exploration of the truth at that point just stops. And that's obviously a problem for anybody that cares about the truth or cares about getting down to the bottom of something or the reality of the way something actually is, right? So maybe the first people that labeled that misinformation maybe had good reason to do so because of the research they'd seen or perhaps the scientists they'd talked to um, had given them information that made that seem an implausible theory. That maybe combined with their existing biases to quickly label things as racist or anything that might be seen um, to favor, you know, one group of people over another as wrong inherently, then you can see why they'd be quick to, you know, trot that opinion out there. And other people who want to be seen as aligned with the initial people speaking out are quick to second their opinions, right? Maybe without doing their own research, without adding anything additional, pretty soon you just get the inertia of the viewpoint it's so strong that very few people are willing to speak out against it. And if they are willing to speak out against it, immediately they're labeled with misinformation or racist or, you know, that type of thing. Um, and so you end up with a, obviously with a bad situation because the truth needs to come out, right? So truth is what I would say our ultimate pursuit or the ultimate good because the truth leads to positive things while misinformation or lying leads to negative things. Right? The truth, while it may hurt in the beginning, ultimately leads to people being able to change, people being able to admit they were wrong and, and ultimately coming to a better understanding of the situation, hopefully a better solution to the situation. Um, so had there been open debate about whether or not this actually came from a lab, there could have been maybe, um, you know, a quicker realization that maybe China was a bad actor in this case. They were trying to cover up the mistakes. Um, all, all sorts of things could have come out of that open debate. Um, but if you look at even just another example, um, you see around you know vaccine hesitancy. There's a there's a lot of people throwing out that label there as well about misinformation, right? So anybody that says you should be hesitant about the vaccine, or anybody that says that you don't need the vaccine is immediately labeled with that misinformation tag, right? And then discredited, so to speak, on many major platforms, especially social media platforms, which again just kills open debate and further puts people into a, a corner or the need to pick sides, right? Which is also unhealthy. Um, because when people are forced, when people are forced into a label, um, they tend to double down on that label, right? When you give them, when you give people the option to be in just one of two camps, um, that just makes them just further confident in the viewpoints of that single camp as opposed to attempting to find some middle ground or find some further truth, right? Uh, when you put people into a corner, they're going to typically be defensive they're going to stick to what they know. They're not going to be open to new ideas or discussion of uh, this, any discussion at all, really. Um, and so you, you saw what happened with vaccines was anybody that hesitant that was hesitant was decried, or anybody that you know spoke about why they might be hesitant was just labeled that, that misinformation, and that just just put people into the two camps. You had pro-vaccine, anti-vaccine people, which it was never, it was never that simple. Um, that's how it was portrayed in the mainstream media and by the political elites, etc. was you only had these two camps and you had to fit into one of them. That wasn't helpful for anybody. Um, it just stifled any debate about the efficacy or the safety of the vaccines or the needfulness for people that weren't high risk. Um, there was no debate that happened there. There was no debate around whether someone should need a vaccine if they've already had COVID, um, or if they're you know super young and not at any risk in that sense, it was just a blanket policy, which made people just distrust it further, right? Because if there's no nuance, 
Um, you know, people don't feel like their voice is being heard. They don't feel like their certain situations being taken into account, and they can also think to themselves like you know it's obvious to most people that if you've had a disease you don't need a vaccine against it right so if you're not willing to admit that fact then they're not going to take you seriously probably in the future um there's a really good article about that that i found through jordan peterson um by dr doidge called needle points which i recommend everybody um takes a look at and i'll put it down in the description as well um that's just another example of how using that label and stifling debate and pushing people into the two camps is just unhelpful for anybody who cares about seeking the truth. Um, which is really what I want to encourage people to do is just don't, don't let anyone push you into a single viewpoint or a single easy narrative about how the world is or what you should believe. Um, I mean, that's exactly what conspiracy theories are, right? It's, it's a simple explanation of a complex issue that sounds good and fits maybe the political biases that you already have and that's why they're that's why people believe them is because it sounds good it gives an explanation for how you know the way the world is in a simple way um, and it kind of reaffirms the things they already believe about maybe the other side or those that they're against politically or that type of thing um, but nothing good comes out of people doubling down on their viewpoints Right? There's nothing positive about that. There's no there's no dialogue that happens, right? And dialogue is how we learn and how we take input from people that we don't typically agree with, right? And when we're able to do that, we're able to see where we're, our views might be flawed or where our plans might be bad. Um, and even just to help people feel valued by listening to them, right? There's a lot of good that comes out of that dialogue. Um, and like I said, that's how we get to the truth. We don't typically, rarely will we ever arrive at the truth on our own, right? We're not typically going to be able to just sit down and think through something and eventually come to some awesome understanding of the reality of the way things are. And that's because we di we're just one person. We only have one viewpoint. We only have our own set of experiences that we're going off of. Um, there's not a lot there to go off of, really. Um, or if we're able to talk to people, to listen to them, to get input from them, to get critiques on our plans, or on our thoughts, they we're able to see our blind spots, we're able to see parts where we've been biased, um, and hopefully at the end of that conversation, you know, there's a better understanding of what the truth is, right? And then you have positive ramifications that come from that, not just for an individual, right? Obviously an individual that learns the truth about maybe themselves better, about the reality of some external situation, that is positive for them. Um, but then it's also positive for people they interact with. And then also it's, it's, it can be positive in the sense of policy decisions, right? So, you know, politicians or the way, you know, our laws or the way our society functions can be, have positive benefit from that type of truth seeking. Um, we can come up with policies that are better, maybe get rid of policies that we don't need. Um, we can have more cohesion on the issues that people agree on, as opposed to stratifying them into their separate camps, even though typically they might agree on something if we frame it in a certain way, or if politicians frame it in a certain way, it can cause people to disagree or seem like they disagree even when they actually do agree. Um, I don't want to, you know, keep rambling here forever, but just just thinking through, let's let's be wise when someone presents a viewpoint to us that's contrary to what we believe. Let's not label something as misinformation because that's not helpful. Um, I'm not saying we don't call things untrue when they're untrue or when we believe they're untrue, but just flat out labeling something as misinformation is not helpful for anyone. We need to look into the claims that are being made to see if there's any validity to them maybe challenge our own preconceived notions talk with some people um, do some research try to come to the best understanding of the truth that we can and if we still think something is incorrect and wrong let's label it let's just call it untrue or false 
Um, but just labeling something point blank as misinformation is um, not helpful and is contrary to the truth and doesn't lead to any positive outcomes. It only leads to more uh, strife between people that disagree. It leads to worse decisions personally and corporately, um, you know, as a country, as a state, uh, as a county. Um, so let's all strive to seek the truth and to uh, not be quick to label things as misinformation.